That's a pretty Almost important saying, quotation. It's all right. It was made in a pamphlet by a fellow who later headed up a society. Let's say right. it was a Not dumb, later. Right then. A dumb statement. The first hmm? society was formed in fifty-eight. Three million? Why are you all now, the John Birch Society, still answering for a statement like that? Why didn't somebody in the Birch Society say, "Look, our founder made an asinine statement. We don't pay any attention to it, and go on to the future"? Why is the John Birch Society? In his phrase, now considered by an awful lot of people who will say, okay, Jerry Falwell, moral majority, new writers, okay, don't like him. But all of a sudden, when you mention the Birch Society, everybody recoils. Why well, is that? The, t the reason is, uh, Tom, of course, we haven't gotten into what the society is. Instead, we have tried to, it's a sort of a classic effort of a straw man that's thrown up uh, where the society never took a position. The society never stated anything about Eisenhower one way or the other. It was never a position of the society. Was it a problem for the society that its head for 25 years was the man who had made that statement, and his head is not that now? Well, part of the problem is, uh, Tom, the, uh, Pat, the actual statement has not been quoted. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to take the time to read the politician with right. the footnotes, they can maybe read it and judge for themselves. Uh, but that's not a position one way or the other of the society. And of course. Another small problem is that Mr. Welch did not resign. Uh, actually, this was a move of transition of leadership of which he was one of the individuals in uh, actively making the transition. He has well, emerged you as a by, chairman emeritus right, and right, continued to the Were you hurt then? Well, I mean, I want to get to the point why the John Birch Society is differentiated from other new right organizations. You can say Conservative Caucus or Nick Pack or, or Conservative Digest, and people say yes, no, yes, no. But you say the Birch Society and there's a recoil. Uh, even among conservatives who will say, no, no, don't call me a member of the Birch Society. Now, why is that? Is that partly due to the fact that Bill Buckley's National <coughs> Review, I think around 19, 1964, read the Birch Society out of the conservative movement? Have you recovered from that? Well, I think Bill Buckley founded ACU in 65, partly right. to do that. Uh, elements within National Review have also, beginning in 65, uh, I think very dishonestly, took a very strong tack against the society. The, Society would actually be termed more of the old right. I think the right. definition of the new but right why, would be vigorous and they, most vigorous. Okay, but why? I mean, I don't know where you disagree with, uh, with, with the new right people, but why are you all, why do you carry around this tarnish, this taint? Well, let me, well, give, you people a, that, let people, me give you another reason why you carry around the, the taint. I'd be glad to give you the answer. Mr. Pat, Mr. Welch. The reason is because uh, the society is the only organization in America that is organized at the grassroots level with paid coordinators, with chapters in the communities all across the country. Conservative caucus. Uh, not with chapters, not with a paid field staff uh, all across the, the but country. That, that's organization. And so the result is that uh, this is the one group, I think, that those who would radically change America seriously fear. And a tremendous campaign was launched in uh, December of 1960. Right. Uh, to move to discredit the John Bird Society and, frankly, launch the uh, initial orders coming out of Moscow. Well, uh, Mr. McDonald, I'm not a conspirator. Uh, I think even Buchanan would vouch for that. Uh, well, but you uh, are Robert, a Robert Council Welch, on Foreign Relations. Robert you're Welch. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Is yeah, that a conspiracy? You've, well, you've certainly... Well, it, Let me just tell you what Newsweek yeah. says, that, says this. The John Birch Society considers communism only one arm of a national, of a master conspiracy in which socialist American insiders are plotting to establish world government. Now, it also says, and here's Director John McManus, that's your public relations director, saying that former Secretary of State Alexander Haig and CIA Director William Casey are two of these master conspirators who are plotting to establish world government. Now, what do you say? Uh, you know, that kind of silly, asinine statement is what makes, pe makes people laugh at the John Birch Society. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism or protecting communism. It has? Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, no, I'm saying because that there I happen is, to belong no, to a no, to there a is an elite core. Study no, that, group? No, no, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of well, them. Let me trilateral finish. commission. A trilateral Council commission. On Council relations. on Foreign Relations. State here's Department, I suppose. Well, let's face it. They have dominated the State Department for 40 years mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much openly. All right, so. but what are they trying to do? Council well, their now? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society. A 
dissolving of sovereignty and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers and the Council is on the Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we're going to have a lot of un unanswered questions, that you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly uh, you're familiar with uh, local professor Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the Who, value. What is the instrumentality of world government? What is like, the instrumentality? Of all the things which, you say about Arthur Schlesinger, that's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May-June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called Schlesinger Arthur Schlesinger said there was a conspiracy. Oh. A conspiracy oh, to he promote didn't use communism? Oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. I he said the objective oh, was to bring about... Well, it? let me finish. I'll, I'll tell you. He said that the objective, the secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, All right. and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. Those are his words, not mine. You think what, John Kennedy ask, was a member of that conspiracy? No, no, let me ask you this. The uh, World Federalist Movement in the post-war era contained a lot of people who eventually broke with it, and a lot of people thought the UN, in the post-war era, looked toward world government. Sure. Indeed, they did, up until 48, 49. But a lot of them said, look, we were utopian. That's over and done with. We can't move. And a lot of them came in Kennedy's government. Uh, Schlesinger was in there when they were fighting uh, in Vietnam, launched the effort in Vietnam. Schlesinger was behind the Bay of Pigs. In other words, look, isn't there some move that occurred in the post-war era that now has been dissipated because nobody believes in the utopian ideal of world government anymore? Well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas the whole could be around. The whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. NATO is, uh, so, uh, is part of the conspiracy? Well, there are certainly elements in NATO. There are people in, uh, in NATO who are very strongly dedicated to the defense of the West. Uh, but at the same time, you find in NATO a steady dissolution. You find a growing weakness as a uh, NATO policy uh, dominated by State Department policies that uh, has not worked. Well, it's uh, a regional grouping, and I think, therefore, it may be suspect by the John Birch Society. We're talking with Congressman Larry McDonald, who has recently been elevated, I guess, the chairmanship of the John Birch Society, succeeding uh, Robert Welsh. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to Crossfire. Our guest is the new chairman, recently named chairman, of the John Birch Society, Congressman Larry McDonald, a Democrat from Georgia. Uh, Mr. McDonald, your, your predecessor believed that the PTA was too left-wing and, uh, and that John Birch Society at one time tried to infiltrate it, or, or so he said. He used the word infiltrate. <laughs> uh, you still, is that part of your program now? Well, I think when the PTA comes out in this program for the test ban treaty and when the PTA comes out for gun control and comes out for obviously national legislative programs that have been linked with liberaldom, uh, having nothing to do with education of our children, I think many people are wondering what in the world is the PTA doing, and that includes members of the John Birch Society. Well, I wonder well about you. Uh, public. I wonder about you. I looked you up. You're, you're, you're the biggest joiner that I've ever seen in the world. You belong, as I counted them, to 67 organizations among which are the National Rifle Association, the American Pistol and Revolver Association, the Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms, the Second Amendment, Found Amendment Foundation, and the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Well, Tom, I think there's a real drive in this country to try to destroy the realization of our citizens that they have a fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear arms as the Constitution allows. And unfortunately, there are those in our society, including elements of the PTA nationally, not always locally by any stretch, but nationally, who would uh, believe that the 
federal government uh, should restrict the right of citizens to keep and bear arms. What get kind back of to grades that? do you give Ronald Reagan as president? And what kind of grades does the John Birch decide to give him? Well, I would say in his speeches, uh, Pat, you'd have to give him close to an A, B plus to an A. But in his performance, uh, What's somewhere... What's most disappointing? Well, I think the fact that the rhetoric is going one way and the record is going another. Let what me ask issue? you about uh, the, this conspiracy again. Well, you can take the issue of, of uh, the, one of the major problems of this country is inflation right. and the problems of the destruction of the dollar. And the fact of the matter is, in spite of promises of the contrary, uh, Reagan uh, has not moved to correct the deficiencies. We're now back to Keynesian well, economics that's, despite uh, comments to the contrary. Do you think that's a p result of the conspiracy you mentioned? Is there somebody working on them to get the inflation so that so that this country will be weakened. Well, as a man who campaigned against elitism, as a man who in his campaign rhetoric said that he would not be having the Council on Foreign Relations trilateral types dominating his cabinet, he's got about 250 members of such in his administration. Well, let me ask you about Bill of Casey. Trump. Now, I've known Bill... Members. I've known, well, of the, of the trilateral well, commission I've known the Bill CFR Casey in since, the administration. I've known Bill Casey, the director of CIA, since World War II. As a matter of fact, in World War II, he was my boss. Now, you... you your uh, public relations director, the John Birch Society, says that Bill Casey is a part of this conspiracy well, that's trying to Bill bring Casey, about world before, government. Before he became CIA, one of his big jobs was aiding in the transfer of technology and uh, goods and so forth to the Soviet Union, uh, helping the Camel River Project, the Export-Import Bank. Oh, helping to finance is these the Export-Import Bank part of the conspiracy? I think the, I'm the whole get drive the the that the, the fact that the American people have been tapped steadily especially since World War II, to finance their enemies and to have the massive technology transfer to those uh, well, who I agree with you. You know that from the Braden Doctrine in the, in the agency, uh, which uh, you're very familiar with, and the feeling that uh, we must somehow subsidize the, quote, non-communist left. Uh, that's among our so-called allies. Braden was and in country after the country, left? that turned out to be the communists, mm -hmm. the crypto-communists masquerading yeah, as the non-communist Yeah, that's Mr. Mitterrand, who has taken the strongest position against the Russians of any Western European Well, leader. he was about to lose everything at the polls, and he had to show some sign. Uh, it's very difficult to say exactly how far that will Congressman be. Congressman McDonald, he's yeah. been using the term conspiracy. No, I didn't use it, no, for no, heaven's no. sakes, Pat. The John Birch Society used it. I don't want to go through the tapes. <laughs> well, it is. It don't blame it on me. He you, used it. You've used it 45 times. That's right. They say this is a conspiracy. Right. I want to know what the conspiracy well, is. Tom. I'm trying to find out who's in it and what agencies of government in it, because I want to fight it along with you. Well, you look and like great, Tom. Let me tell you, Tom. <laughs> you you, you tell uh, me, uh, you know, how can I join the John Birch Society? Well, well gosh, you. Tom, you've got no problem at all. All you need to do is write a letter to the John Birch Society, Belmont, Massachusetts, 02178, and yeah. tell them that you would like to purchase for $2 a copy of the Blue Book. Tom, you read it, and I think if you're a dedicated American, you will agree with every word, then you get in touch with me, and we may even sign you up. Yeah, but it says here in one of your, pub uh, one of your publications, not just anyone can be a Bircher. Now, well, how I can I be a Bircher? Anyone. Now, if you don't believe in the Constitution and limited government and free enterprise and biblical values of morality, I believe in all those, but I don't. Qualify. I don't well, believe there's a conspiracy. He'd make a lousy well, candidate. Tom, Tom, you know, candidate. As, as a matter he's of, had a member of the conspiracy. He's a member of the press. <laughs> let me ask you. He's used now. Mr. Braden's used for the 47th time the term conspiracy. Now, let me ask you seriously. When you use people like Casey, who is on the Council on Foreign Relations, David Rockefeller's Trilateral Committee, uh, Commission, what do you mean? Or do you mean? Is that your term, the term conspiracy? Well, there are many different levels of the problem. But yes, the term has been used, the term of conspiracy. When you have a group of people... They, I mean, they're actively, to... actively collaborating, and at the other end of that point of collaboration are communists, and on this end of the point of collaboration is Bill Casey and trilateralists and, and CFR. Uh, Al Haig. You have people who are part of the elitist structure of this country that have dominated this country openly for 40 years. I know, but they're not... Is that a conspiracy? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. If people quietly working together for evil objectives, two or more, that by definition is a conspiracy. You have by their own admission, you look at the tragedy and hope by Professor Carol Quigley, who's a member of this elitist group. He says, sure, we've been working this. Sure, we've been collaborating with communism. Yes, we're working for a global accommodation. Yes, we're working for world government. The only thing I object to is that we have kept it a secret. And I think we've gone so far along we should come out and say. I'll bet you a dollar and a half that Bill Casey doesn't know who Professor Quigley is. I don't. He's at Georgetown well, a number of years uh, ago. He, he, he died a couple of years ago, and he wrote The Tragedy and Hope. He's a very noted member of, the, of your club, Tom. 
Tom, you've got to broaden your reading a little yes, bit. You really well, got I, to... what I ought to do is read more about conspiracies, and that's why I'm interested in what Well, I'll tell you what, you, what you ought to do is go back and look at your founder, Edward Mandel House, because he wrote the book Philip Drew Administrator, and Colonel in this, House. Colonel House said that what he envisioned for the world was a world government along socialist lines as envisioned by Karl Marx. Now, that's, mm -hmm. that's your leader. Uh -huh. Tom, so you got to go back to the beginning. Well, his and see leader what the was Woodrow party. Wilson. Do you think he was a communist? No, I think person? Woodrow Wilson uh, was his follower. Uh, I think Edward Mandel House dominated Wilson, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Edward Mandel House, uh, that was, uh, we ought to make that clear. He was Colonel President House. Wilson's uh, principal alter, advisor. Alter ego, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, so he is the he is the real villain from which all no, these no. conspiracies. Uh, no, 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 no. He is a descend. major figure, Tom. But there is has been, unfortunately, in the West, uh, an element. Uh, there are good members in the Council on Foreign Relations, dedicated patriotic people. You've had Sproul Braden, who was a member of the Council of the Birch Society, Bill Buckley, and Council on Foreign Relations. You've got some dedicated people, but the driving forces have very clearly been willing to collaborate, subsidize, work for technology transfer for what they feel is some type of an accommodation and merger. And I, I submit this would be a disaster for the American Republic. Are there any Our in guest, Congress? Sure. Our guest has been Congressman Larry McDonald of the John Birch Society. He's the new chairman. He succeeded uh, Robert Welsh, who has stepped down, as I understand it. Is that correct? He's been sort of promoted to Chairman Emeritus. He's been Emeritus. promoted to Chairman Emeritus and founder. And Tom Braden and I will be back with final comments in a moment. Pat, I, I just want to tell you, I think some of the people who served in the Nixon White House are good, clean, upstanding, patriotic, Amer patriotic Americans. And some of them, on the other hand, are, are suspect. And I, I'm just going to have... Larry McDonald, the head of the Birch Society, take a look at some of those people, and I wonder if he might find you. Tom, where I disagree... There's something with, going on here. I disagree with Congressman McDonald is the idea of conspiracy with you and your friends. I think it's more of a herding instinct. The direction you've been moving in, inertia, mm -hmm. carries you further and further. But I do think this. That slogan, get the U.S. out of the U.N. and the U.N. out of the U.S., looks better and better every day, doesn't it? Maybe they were ahead of their time on that one. No, Pat, I think we've got to have uh, communications with the world, and the U.N. makes me mad, too, but uh, I don't think it's a part of the great conspiracy which extends from Bill Casey and Al Haig all the way to communism. Well, I think that uh, Larry McDonald's a patriot. I think he's wrong about the conspiracy, but he's probably less wrong about what he says about this country than the guy I'm talking to. Yeah, I think... Uh, 